Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Rob Stelic, and uh, I run the robotics lab here at Crescent School. Joining me are Jordan Grant and Jake Fisher, two recent graduates of ours, stellar graduates, I might add. And we're here this afternoon to share with you a partnership that we started a few years ago that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, in collaboration with Sunnyview, a special needs school, our robotics lab has been designing and building toys for disabled children. Now let me give you some background. Crescent School has a thriving technology program. Uh, there are design courses in grades 9, 11, and 12, in addition to a competitive robotics team, which uh, Mr. White told you about just a moment ago. Um, now during these courses and through their experience on the team, the students are learning all sorts of technical skills, such as mechanical design, uh, fabrication, how to build parts from scratch, um, electrical circuits, how to connect uh, the wires, make sure everything's working that way, and they learn a lot of programming. So diverse set of skills, and robotics includes a little bit of everything. And one of the great things about robotics is there isn't any one person who can do it all. You really do depend on each of those skills and each of those teams. Um, now, this has been very engaging for our students. It's been a, a great uh, part of the school. We have a lot of fun doing it. But a couple years ago, we discussed the possibility of building a little bit more than just robots. Now, it was around this time I met an extraordinary person. This is Dale Zimmerman. She is an education assistant at Sunnyview Public School. And what she does, she has a basement workshop there, and she adapts and customizes equipment for disabled children all across the Toronto District School Board. And it, as well as this, she, um, she'll modify toys and adapt them in a way that children who wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity are able to play independently with these toys. And this is how she got her name. She's officially known as the Toy Doctor. So I met with her, and I discussed you know, our robotics program, what we do at Crescent School, and we said, is there any way we can get together and we, you know, work together on this? And she was very interested in partnering with us and seeing what we could do together. Um, and so as a result, now our grade 12, our senior tech design course, um, we, we take all of the students there at the beginning of the year. Uh, we meet, we take a tour of Sunnyview, we meet with some of the children there, and we talk to Dale and we say, okay, well, what can we do to help? Um, what are some of your needs? Uh, what are some ideas you've had? And then we go from there, the boys come back to the school and they spend the year designing and building adapted toys. So what I'd like to do is, uh, I'll give a quick demonstration. Well, that's what we're doing. We're giving demonstrations, but... Um, <laughs> This uh, right here is a catapult, uh, and this is something uh, two students built in the course last year. And uh, it's a pretty simple device. It's made to launch bean bags or balls. And we had some ideas of what they could do with this. Um, you'll notice in the background there, there's actually a smart board. And what they were doing is they were launching bean bags at the smart board. And the program on the smart board would leave kind of a paint splatter on the wall everywhere something would hit. So that was kind of cool, but really, the kids just love throwing things. And that, that's what kids do. And some of these kids had never had the chance to do something as simple as that. So um, what I'd like to do is show you a video of the catapult in use. Making toys for kids like Hillary, who has cerebral palsy and very little mobility. Playing catch with her dad thanks to a catapult the students built that works with the press of a button something Hillary can manage. It gives her a chance to do something that normal kids would do. So, okay, so this was, a, this was a segment on CTV. We had an open house last year, and uh, they came and they did kind of a special on the robotics program. And that was quite a special moment. Um, Hillary has, as you heard, she has cerebral palsy. She's not able, she doesn't have the motor skills to grab a ball and throw it. That was the first time she has ever played catch with her father. It was remarkable. So to, just to be a part of that um, has really been an amazing experience for all of us. Um, now I'd like to hand it over to Jake. Many of the children at Sunnyview, due to their disability, uh, lack the fine motor skills required to press and hold small buttons or finally adjust dials and knobs. 
to make all the toys we built usable, it was very important to develop a switch that could be activated easily. So we created a touch sensitive button that uses, that uses a capacitive sensor to turn on and off based on the mere presence of a hand. No pressure at all is required. This is great because it gives the children accessibility to toys they other wouldn't, other, otherwise wouldn't have. While we were at Sunnyview, we noticed that Sunnyview had several toys that would drive around, but oftentimes they got stuck against walls. To solve this problem, I worked on this project called the Unstuckable Toy. So intrinsically, by the way the toy is designed, it will not stop when it hits an obstacle. Instead, without the driver having to do anything, it will swiftly turn away and drive off. Now this is great because it gives the children independence. They don't need a supervisor to help them out when they make a mistake and guide the toy into a barrier. We also found that if we attach markers to this toy, it would draw really neat designs on a piece of paper. And in fact, the students are able to create pieces of art, much like these. This was actually created by students at Sunnyview. Thanks, Jake. Now, many of the students at Sunnyview School have sensory needs, and that means that they need to learn and explore just as much as babies do. So putting things in their mouth, feeling different textures, and especially looking at things to understand them. Bright and colorful lights are an effective way of interesting them in their surroundings and focusing their attention. And that's the basis of our two projects here, the LED cube and the spinning LED orb. So let's jump into the demonstration. Uh, lights, please. All right, the LED cube creates various intricate light patterns that the kids can cycle through at the press of a button. It's comprised of 512 individually soldered LEDs, and it was made from two, uh, designed by two of our grade 11 students this year. Under this beautiful light show, we have uh, a housing which has a whole mess of wires, I won't get into that, and a small microcontroller uh, that we've programmed to make these wonderful patterns. Very cool. Next over here, we have the spinning LED orb. OK, what does it do? Now, the spinning LED orb has a couple more buttons for us to play around with. Uh, the first selects the color. Each of the red, green, and blue LEDs can be controlled independently, as you can see there. And sometimes we'll get an excited reaction if a kid lands on his or her favorite color. The next button controls this tiny motor on the inside axis, and it's powered through a network of wiring and slip rings all through here, and it gives a cool effect. The final button just runs the motor on the outside axis and provides a different effect. So that shows the cause and effect relationship between the buttons being pressed and how the light reacts to it. Now the best thing about the spinning LED orb is that when both motor buttons are pressed at the same time, it gives you the coolest effect. So based on the speed we have this configured for, we can get the colors to separate, to fuse, to oscillate, or to remain stationary. And that's all via programming. And this creates the cognitive connection in the kids' minds that teamwork is advantageous to them, that a student will call over his friend to come and press the other button so that together they can achieve the final effect. And it's, I've seen that happen, and it's moments like those where a student comes to our toy and their face lights up uh, much brighter than all these LEDs combined. And it, it really warms the heart. And Jake and any other students who have participated in this, they'll tell you how rewarding this experience is. And I mean, the lights are fun and all, but the fact that these toys can seriously engage the children and also aid in their development is what's really remarkable here. So. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, just in closing, I, I want to say once again that working with Sunnyview has been incredibly rewarding for uh, all of us. And it's, it's great to see uh, students that have come through our technology program put the skills that they've learned in the robotics lab to use to, to help children with real needs. Uh, it's, it's really remarkable. So it's a it's win-win. Sunnyview loves uh, the things that we can come up with, and we love just being able to do it. Um, so it's been a lot of fun for everyone. And just in closing, Honeyvall 
probably been curious about the catapult, so I think it's time. Um, as a little anecdote, uh, I, I heard recently from a teacher at Sunnyview that they've been using the catapult as a tool to teach impulse control. <laughs> so we'll just pause for a moment. <laughs> and, oh. Fire. <laughs> Thank you very much.